Perhaps you saw the recent release of the Rolex Yacht Master 42 in titanium and thought that it was a pretty impressive watch. Well, at £11,800, it should be. Well, before you do anything rash, take a look at this instead, the Grand Seiko Mistflake SPGE285. I'll explain why. We're on tour. If you want to join me live at an event near you and hear first about limited edition merch and giveaways, then make sure to register at the link in the description below. Thank you. Titanium has been used in watchmaking since the 1970s, when Japanese brand Citizen used it in the X8. It's not a common material in this business, but it's been used enough to take it out of the exotic category and stick it more into the Nito slot. Forged carbon fibre or solid sapphire, it ain't. At least, not necessarily in wow factor. Fact is, titanium as a metal makes steel look like it didn't do its homework because it was too busy eating crayons. Titanium is just as strong but is 30% lighter, which is why it's used in cool stuff like jet fighters and rockets. It gets a bit of a bum rap because in watches, people want heavy, not light. Well, they did until Rolex suggested otherwise. So now people are rethinking how titanium can fit in with their life energy. Now they've had the decision made for them, it's time to revisit a watch that Grand Seiko already had this whole time. It's called the SBGE285, or if you're a romantic and not a robot, the Mistflake. As with all Grand Seikos, the dial is modelled after the epic beauty of the Japanese wilderness. In this case, the morning mist in the wintry mountains of Nagano, where the watch is made. It's actually the same texture as the OG Snowflake, but I suppose at some point the watchmakers have to stop looking out the window and actually get on with their work. Unlike the Snowflake, however, this watch is part of the Evolution 9 series, a design ideal that seeks to bring Grand Seiko watches to the attention of a more modern, more handsome audience like me. That means aggressive styling, fat markers, and a general chunk that makes the watch a visually very pleasing thing the Snowflake never quite managed. So how does it compare to the Rolex? It's a millimeter smaller at 41 millimeters, but the skinnier 24 hour bezel compared to the Yachtmaster's 60 minute bezel opens up the dial more and therefore gives it a similar presence. Despite the not unsubstantial size of the Mistflake, the wearing experience is made all the more universal thanks to stumpy lugs that don't protrude too far. Both watches are water resistant to 100 meters, plenty for real world use and beyond, and both are fitted to a titanium three-piece bracelet. Grand Seiko still has a ways to go in competing with the incredible adjustability of the Rolex clasp, lacking even basic micro adjustment, but it does at least have half links built into the bracelet. And of course the Grand Seiko switches out pure mechanical for spring drive, a mechanical quartz hybrid that uses the power of the Wiley spring to drive a quartz regulated, electromagnetically controlled glide wheel. It gives the second hand a sweep smoother than Barry White after a sip of Bailey's, with the added benefit of knocking Rolex's four second per day variants into a cocked hat by a factor of two. Both have more or less three days power reserve. Spring drive is always going to be a matter of preference, so between the two the choice is always going to be split. The Grand Seiko's Calibre 9 R66, however, gains the benefit only the most expensive Rolexes have recently been privileged to have, a sapphire case bag. It's not Grand Seiko's most visually impressive movement, but it's a damn sight more interesting than a blank piece of titanium. So why am I so confident the Grand Seiko pips the Rolex in this battle of the titanium beasts? Well, because if you think about the customer who this watch is pitched at, I think the Grand Seiko offers a better package. Let's have a think about this a bit. Let's say we side with Rolex and concur that the typical Yachtmaster owner is likely to be someone who is indeed a master of their yacht. What kind of functionality do you think that person will need? A 60-minute counter? For what? 
checking when their boat shoes have dried out. If I know anything about yacht owners, it's that their yachts are often in different places around the world. Seems to make more sense to me than to slap that big titanium watch full of a GMT complication instead, which is exactly what Grand Seiko has done with the Mistflake. Unlike the Yachtmaster 42, which sits there pretending to be useful with its rock-hard titanium abs, the Grand Seiko is actually getting stuff done. It's not like the Grand Seiko is an uggo, either. Titanium is a tricky material to work with at the best of times, evidenced by the fact that Rolex have minimized as much polishing as possible. I'm sure they'd say they were making the watch more rugged, but I see what they're doing. In any case, there's no such shirking over at Grand Seiko, the intense polish famously applied to its steel cases, not just present here, but in such volume that it basically looks like showing off. It's around the bezel, along the case edge, on the crown and on the bracelet. Big, thick lines of it deeply mirror finish despite the fact this titanium has actually been hardened. I mean, what else did you expect? This is the watchmaker that hand polishes every hand and marker until it looks like liquid mercury. And for me, that summarizes why I think the Mistflake is the watch a yacht faring sea hero really wants. The Rolex is made to hit some numbers. It feels restricted in some ways by budget. It's not an elaborate demonstration of the possibilities of its finest work. It's just a titanium sports watch wearing a fancy crown. The Grand Seiko, on the other hand, takes every opportunity to remind you you've bought a piece of luxury. Like the yacht itself should be trimmed with leather and teak, this is dripping in attention to detail that quite openly brags about how much effort went into making it. By comparison, I would say the Yachtmaster is less a watch for yachts, and more appropriate for the captain of a battleship. But as we all know, these watches aren't really bought by yacht owners. They're bought by all sorts of people who would just like a really nice watch. And so for them, there's an added summary that demonstrates why the Mistflake should sit alongside the consideration of a Yachtmaster purchase. It's £7,650 and the Rolex is £11,800. That's a lot of money left over for yacht lessons. What do you think of the Grand Seiko Mistflake, and how would you compare it to the Yachtmaster 42 in titanium? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.